International Ambassador, Grand Chief of State, King, Diplomat, Chief Overseer, Exclusive Special Attorney, International Non-Government Organization CEO, Traditional Medicine Physician, Inventor, and National Development Specialist. His professions and occupations include Apostle and Chief Overseer of Sovereign Church of Elohim International, Grand Chief of State and Permanent Minister of Ecclesiastical, Indigenous, and International Law and Justice of the Washita Indigenous and Immigrant Nation, Special Attorney of SG Santa Romana Estate, International CEO of One Blood International, an international national development NGO, traditional medicine physician and inventor, a disease elimination specialist, founder and CEO of Word of Elohim International University, and founder and CEO of SCEI One Blood Skills Development Centers and IFSEC Global independent food security project. A partial list of his educational history includes 1976 to 1978 at University of Maryland College Park where he studied mechanical engineering. 1979 to 1981 Donsbach University. A bachelor's, master's, and PhD was achieved in nutrition. In 1981 to 1982, Century University, Master's and Doctorate in Business Marketing. Partial Accomplishments and Associations. As Elohim's Apostle and International Ambassador for World Peace, Dr. Jackson has met with a growing number of international heads of state. His past and present accomplishments and affiliations include International Lymphology Association, American Preventive Medical Association, International Ambassadors and Diplomats Coalition, International Chamber of Commerce, International Society of Notaries, World Traders Association, Humanitarians for World Peace, International Traditional Medicine Association, Global Traditional Rulers Council, International Conflict Elimination Council, International Interrogation Training Specialists. He has been named in the Who's Who Registry of Global Business Leaders, 1993 to 1994. Who's Who Registry of National Business Leaders, 1994-1995. International Who's Who of Professionals, 2001 to 2002. Partial Current Projects. Dr. J currently serves as consultant, facilitator, and or director to several development-oriented and or humanitarian projects, including SCEI One Blood National Development and Independent Food Security Projects, West Africa. SG Santa Romana Estate Research, Asset Verification, Assignment and Settlement Agent, International PAC Treaty Negotiator, International Collateral Funding for Development Coordinator, Native and Indigenous Nation Development Project, International Education and Conflict Resolution Project, Private Resources for Development Coordinator, National and International Business Development Project Designer, Intergender Development Program, One Blood Multidisciplinary Health and Research Hospital, and Jackson Pratt Diagnostic Centers.
go on and get back to uh, Miracle Man. And we'll see if we can't finish getting what Mr. Day needs while we keep knocking out our day. All right, thank you, sweetie. Well, aside from uh, your Sunday church services, what else does your church do? Well, <laughs> it's interesting you should ask the question that way. Uh, just like the apostles uh, that you read about in the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and balance of the New Testament, uh, we observe uh, or worship on Saturday, the seventh day of week, the seventh day of the week ordained in the scripture that we read about in the book of Genesis that we see them um, observing in the New Testament we worship on that same day which is Saturday the seventh day of week instead of Sunday the first day of the week and this is in the scriptures also yes yes absolutely um, the tradition of Sunday was changed by um, another prominent uh, organization. In fact, it was the, the Church of Rome that changed the observance for their adherents from the day uh, identified in the scriptures to the first day of the week as a way of marking their adherents, the people who followed them and their system, the universal church versus the, uh, uh, the authority of the scriptures. So, but, go ahead. So, but, but what difference does it make what day you worship on? I mean, as long as you're worshiping God, doesn't he just appreciate that? What difference does it make? Well, again, uh, rather than follow the doctrines and traditions of men, I follow the instructions in the scriptures. And to us, no human authority or no human entity or any uh, uh, supposed divine entity has the authority to change or to alter what the sovereign creator himself laid down as the instructions. And when he said that the, uh, the seventh day was the day of rest and that it's the day that we should keep holy and then it's the day that we should observe, then that's what we do. If people rationalize their worship and their adherence and their uh, policies and practices to the contrary you know that's their free choice but we just choose to follow the authority of the scriptures and experience the reality of Elohim's um, promise provision including including uh, divine healing and other uh, other things or miraculous healings but that's not necessarily the focus here so I'm not going to really dwell on that I'll just make it a point that Instead of following the doctrines and traditions of men, we follow the authority of the scriptures. Now, the argument about whether it makes a difference or whether it doesn't make a difference is not an argument that I waste my time with. Uh, I rationalize to each his own. If you do it his way, then you enjoy the benefits. If you don't do it his way, then you pray for the benefits, you pray for the intervention, you hope for the healing, and it never comes. Uh, we experience it uh, consistently have throughout the time that we've learned and been practicing this way, which for me has been most of my life. Um, and I've seen it in the lives of thousands, tens of thousands around the world. So, you know, that's what we do. I don't try to get into or adjust anybody else's belief system. We just, just do what we do. And then when people ask, we explain why we do, the authority behind what we do. And everyone makes their own decisions. 
So, so then what else do you do besides your uh, worship services? Well, we have other areas of, of, of intervention, uh, both in our community. A couple years ago, we gave uh, donated turkeys on Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving is a, a holiday here in the U.S. We donated turkeys on Thanksgiving, uh, 200 to one of the uh, state agencies. This year in uh, 2011, uh, we're going to have a 1,000 turkey um, uh, giveaway where we allow people to go in, register uh, on, the, on the internet uh, at our site for free turkey and we'll give away a thousand turkeys during the Thanksgiving holidays this year. But this is just a way to uh, give to the community and in this time of food insecurity, this is just another way that we can help. Uh, we've had operations in 30 countries around the world over the years and since 1999 we've been focusing on the ECOWAS region of West Africa and uh, we started our operations in the country of Sierra Leone which at the time we started was still engulfed in the Civil War but we began an operation to hopefully to begin to positively impact the the food security problem because at the time there were a lot of people die, dying from starvation and uh, so we began our, our food production, our rice program behind the war lines and um, uh, that region is the focus of our mission now, trying to create a micro, micro model where we demonstrate and implement Elohim's solutions from the scriptures to all of these problems that plague nations around the world with the hope that at some point in time, as things in the world and in society goes down, people will see this example and say, listen, maybe these people understand something and begin to implement and magnify these same programs, these same systems, so that the benefits that become uh, a reality to a small group under our program that would be, you know, maybe tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands grow to engulf the millions nations at a time throughout the region and who knows maybe even throughout the world so you are saying then that uh, your God is doing things for you and your church that he isn't doing for other churches and other organizations well I didn't say it that way um, I will state it this way we pray to Elohim, we follow his instructions, and the things that he promises in the scriptures are our experience reality. Now, whether those things are the same reality and to whom else they are a reality, I can't speak to that. What I do know, however, is most of the people that I see, most of the organizations I see, most of the churches I see around the world, the kind of intervention that we experience is very foreign to them. I'll leave it up to everyone to interpret the data however they want to interpret it. I understand that you are cutting back the operations or downsizing the operations in Liberia, at least for the current time. Uh, can you explain why that is? Uh, sure. We, we started our intervention in Liberia in 2005 with uh, cane farms, uh, cane farms and, and a cane distillery. Uh, in 2008, at the first annual ECOWAS Food Security Update and Summit, we had a significant presence of Liberian uh, representatives that came as a delegation in attendance. And during that time, after seeing our intervention, seeing our farms, seeing our warehouses, uh, hearing about the development of the program, they encouraged us to let our next target in the ECOWAS region be Liberia. And we decided we would, uh, after evaluating some things, I decided I would, with such a strong presence of government representation, requested. So we began operations there uh, 